how do you stop making excuses? This is actually pretty simple. And I said it the other day, and you have to realize, you have to know, you have to accept that all your excuses are lies. They are lies, all of them. Think about the things that you tell yourself, the lies you use to rationalize taking the easy road. Taking the easy road and leaving discipline behind. Think about them. Always something there to build a case on why you can't move on, why you can't grow to the next level, why you can't begin to manifest your greatness, why you can't begin to live life on your terms. Always something there to block you, to keep you where you are and keep you from beginning to develop your true greatness. Always some fear. How do we handle it? And I'm saying that if you've been hiding out behind but, if you've been using the fact that you don't have enough money or you don't have the education, take it head on. Go get the education. You don't have time. That's a lie. You don't have support. That's a lie. You don't, you don't know the best way. Or you're too old or you're too young. Of course you're too old or too young. Lie. And there's, you're too busy. Sure you are. That's a lie. And you're too tired or you're too sore or you're just plain not feeling it. Lies, lies, lies. And the list goes on and on and on. And it doesn't stop if you don't make it stop. What happens is about the same. You might put that in parentheses here. Same. What people do, that's what's different. Everything can happen. Anything can happen. But it's not the happenings. It's what you do about it. Somebody says, yeah, but you don't understand the disappointments I've had. Come on. See, a lot of people pretend that they want more out of life. But all you have to do is watch their actions. People who tell you, oh yeah, one day I want to have a restaurant. See, they're pretending they want to go into business for themselves. They're not serious. How can you tell less? Watch their actions. Watch what they're doing. The proof is in the pudding. So if you want to do something, if you thought about something you want to do, take it head on. Decide that you're going to start looking at it, start doing research on it, start tackling it, start becoming involved in whatever and wherever it might lead you to begin to explore the possibilities in that particular thing that you're seeking so that you can begin to learn all you can about it. So recognize. Recognize the excuses are not valid. They aren't. They're trumped up. They're conjured up. They're fabricated. They're lies. And how do you stop the lies? You stop the lies with the truth. The truth. The truth will set you free. The truth will stand and the truth will deliver you from procrastination and laziness and the downward spiral that comes with a lack of discipline. So don't believe the lies, believe the truth. And the truth is you have time, you have the skill, you have the knowledge and the support and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. So, cast out the lies, burn them down, and listen to the truth, then live the truth, and go out and get it done. Decide that you're going to face it, that whatever shortcomings you have, that you're going to strengthen yourself there. Whatever training that's required, that you're going to go get that training, that you're going to get started right now. 
And George Washington Carver would say, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. Always strive to be more than that which you are. Yeah, don't get satisfied with yourself. Always know that wherever you are, you can enjoy more, that you deserve more. Most of us go through life pretending. Pretending that we're satisfied where we are. Pretending that everything is okay. Pretending that, that we don't have any special goals or ambitions or desires. When really deep down inside, we do really want more. But most people, you know what they do? Most people go through life quietly and safely, tiptoeing to an early grade. Find out what it is you want and go after it as if your life depends on it. Why? Because it does. One thing that motivational speaker is supposed to never tell you or that you heard that a motivational speaker is never to tell you is that you can't. You can't. You're not supposed to tell people they can't. That's no way to encourage anybody. Tell them they can't do something. But I will tell you tonight that the most powerful motivational speeches that I have ever heard came from people who told me I couldn't do something. <laughs> you know why? Because when they told me I couldn't do it, I was bound and determined to show them that I could. Tell me I can't do it. I will prove you wrong. I will show you <laughs> that you're mistaken. You have chosen the wrong one to tell that they can't do something. Because I believe, and this is real important, I can't, will thwart you, will stop you, will slow you down, will turn you around and cause you to move backwards if you let it. But if you have the proper mindset, I can't, will do nothing but make you that more determined to get to your goal. People don't want to exude that much passion in which it becomes obsession because they're fearful of their obsessions. Well, if I'm obsessed about this topic, it's going to take away from my family, from my time. Um, it's going to introduce a lot of you know, fear or unknown to me, so they back off. But I tell people all the time, there is a difference between passion and obsession. And high performers have obsession about the topic, right? They are obsessed about the topic in which they're trying to learn, master, grow into. And so that obsession is real. And I tell people the difference, here's how you know the difference between the two. When you're passionate, everybody cheers you on. They're stoked for you. Oh, you found your passion? Awesome. Follow your passion. Live with passion. Be passionate. When you're obsessed, they're like, why are you gonna be so crazy? Why can't you be satisfied? Why do you always gotta get things so perfect? Why do you spend so much time here? When you're obsessed, people think you're nuts. So it's different. And it's like, I always tell people, if no one thinks you're crazy, you're not yet operating to the outer limits of your potential. You're not there yet. If you wanna be great, not good, not also grand, not second, not third, if you want to be great, the very best at what you do, obsession is a necessity. You must be. Ain't no two ways about it. Obsession. Nobody got to be the best at anything. I don't care if you flip pancakes, you sweep porches, you wash dishes, you bust tables. If you're the very best at it, you are obsessed about it. And obsessed about it means you slept and you dreamed and you ate that. I will be the very best at what I do. I am determined to be the very best at what I am. And you and you nobody 
can tell me that I can't do it because I am obsessed. Somebody in your life should say, man, you really care about this in like a crazy way. And when you get there, you know you found your thing. And not everybody, find, not everybody finds that. Question the impossible. The greatest achievements of mankind were made by people who questioned impossible. The Wright brothers, oh, we can't fly, there's no way. If we're supposed to fly, we'd be born with wings. Christopher Columbus, the world is flat, Chris, the world is flat. And at that time, it was accepted by everyone to be true. Question what people call impossible. Four minute mile was the limit. No, no way possible. Okay, what tell you? No way, no way possible. You're gonna run a mile in under four minutes. It just can't be done. Roger Bannister said, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. And he went out there and he proceeded to do just that. Not me, not I. <laughs> you have chosen the wrong one to tell something like that to. I will show you, I will show you what I can do. I will show you, I will turn your I can't, I will never, I won't, it's impossible. I will turn it around and I will show you that I can do anything, anything. That is my message to you. Let the I can't fuel your fire. One of the things you got to understand, my friend, is that you're supposed to fail. You're supposed to fuck fail because failure is the stepping stone to success. It's not just cliche. Failure is an experience that lends to wisdom that ultimately makes you a stronger version of yourself. Like until I make my dreams become a reality, I'm not quitting. I don't care how much money I have to invest. I'm gonna continue to do this until I become successful. All right, I've got a rule called uh, the show up rule, right? Somebody said you could pretend that you care, but you can't pretend that you're there. The only way you can be there is to show up. And what I'm asking you to do for me, you'll never be a failure if you show up every single day. Every single day when I come, I show up and I let failure know. Failure is not an option. So what it takes 12 years to get it for? Failure is not an option. So what I, 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 I put myself in a PhD program when I know that to be a great person in the PhD program, you have to read well, you have to write well, which are my two greatest weaknesses. But failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. You can't even let it sink into your brain. Into not even a second. You have to know that this thing is going to work. Come hell or high water, whatever it is that I set out to do, it may not happen in six months, it may not happen in a year, it may not happen in two years, but at some point, my dream is going to become a reality. You know, I get asked a lot, you know, what is the secret of achieving goals? You know, how do you really quantitate it? How do you put it down so every day you know if you're going in that direction of success or maybe you're altered? You know, and people are like, man, is it your genetics? Is it your potential? Is it, you know, when it comes down to it, success has nothing to do with potential. It's all about the perseverance of somebody. I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 things that do not work. Right? And who wrote that? Yeah. Thomas said, come on, come on. These are the things that, that help me change my, 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 my thought patterns. They help me to change my mindset. Listen to me. It's 10,000 things that didn't work. And all I have to do is the next one. And once I do the next one, bam, I'm going to be successful. I'm telling you, every time I stand up here and do what I'm doing, all I can remember was sleeping in abandoned buildings. That's all I could think about. But I kept trying, and I kept trying, and I kept trying, and I tell people I am not the rabbit, I'm the turtle, but I kept going, I was consistent, and I'm standing here today. But what I found out in life, as life goes on, life is about losing. 
As we get older, we lose our hair, we lose our teeth, we lose our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, and um, but it's the ones who overcome that lost in life and um, could shun away adversity and always willing to fight at every particular moment in life are the ones that are able to transcend and be able to spread the word to other people who's in that same particular gender as they are. That's what life is about, stretching and challenging, looking for ways that you can begin to improve yourself. You could turn anything in life into something if you just keep showing up. If you throw shit against the wall, eventually something will stick. You guys that are, have this potential, don't have this potential, you know, that shit dies. What continues to last forever is a perseverance to always show up. That's what champions do. Every single champion is the same as every ordinary person. The only differential is that they show up to the event every single day. They see failure as a learning curve. They welcome failure. You learn more from failure than you ever will from success. So showing up and getting knocked on your ass, finally testing for you, stand back up and re face that endeavor, it's going to be the overriding factor that makes a difference. Everything you do, you do it to the best of your ability. It doesn't matter what you're doing, it's the fact that you're doing it, so therefore it means something to you. It doesn't matter what you're born with, it doesn't matter your potential, how much you know, the silver spoon or money you have, all of that can be attained if you show up and you're willing to, to risk failure for success. taking responsibility for whatever happens to you, knowing that you have consciously made the decisions that are now affecting you, knowing that what is happening now, today, is the direct result of your activity, what you did yesterday. Self-reliance means counting on yourself, trusting yourself, being confident with yourself, being responsible to yourself, trusting your own instincts. Trusting the conclusions that you have developed from your study of experiences and philosophies. Taking the credit that is due you. Learning from the mistakes that you have made. You know, we hold on to this story that we kind of fabricate, we build uh, in our lives that, you know, about certain things. And that story is basically an excuse and a reason about why certain things uh, didn't happen. You know, why you weren't able to accomplish or do this. And maybe your story or your BS is I didn't have the time or I didn't have the money or there was traffic or this happened to me because of uh, this person, my boss, my family member, my parents, my brother, my sister, the country, the economy, etc. Right? We have these things, these external things that we blame and these excuses and reasons that we have. It don't matter whose fault it is that something is broken if it's your responsibility to fix it. For example, it's, it's not somebody's fault if their father was an abusive alcoholic, but it's for damn sure their responsibility to figure out how they're going to deal with those traumas and try to make a life out of it. Some people tend to blame others for their mistakes, blame others for their failures. Now what happens is every time that you do that, every time that you blame or you have an excuse or you BS yourself or have a story, you're giving away your power. You're basically giving, a, giving away your power and you have no ability to change what your current circumstance is. You have no power to change your life because you're putting it on out, something outside of yourself that you have no control over, right? You have no control of, of the external world in any way, right? You have influence at best, but you have 100% control over yourself over your own mind, your own thoughts, your own actions, your own behaviors in your life. You have full control over that. You know, you might be influenced by the outside world, but you're ultimately the person that decides uh, everything in your life. As long as we're pointing the finger and, and, and stuck in whose fault something is, we're jammed and trapped into victim mode. When you're in victim mode, you are stuck in suffering road to power is in taking responsibility your heart your life your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone now my approach to my better future very early on in my career was to just go through the day with my fingers crossed and I used to say something like 
I sure hope things will change for the better. Then here's what I found out. They're not going to change. Somebody says, well then, how will my life ever change? Answer, when you change. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change, it'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. Take personal responsibility. It's a constant storm to try to figure out what you're about, and you change. At 26, you're all about the hustle, you're gonna be a billionaire, this and that, and then you go to the bar one night and you fall in love, and it changes what you care about, right? And then you have a child, and then this happens, and then that happens. Things change. You just have to always consistently try to figure out what's driving you, and not because other people are watching, and not because that's what your dad wants, and not that because that's what you said was gonna happen, and it doesn't look like it, and your family's gonna judge you. You just have to be as real with yourself as possible, and that is a very difficult struggle, but when you're not, you create enormous vulnerability and unhappiness. Truthful conversations redeem people. Because if you come to a clinical psychologist whose worth is salt, you have a truthful conversation. The conversation is, well, here's what's wrong with my life. And here's what caused it. You know, maybe it takes a year to have that conversation. And here's how it might be fixed. Here's what a, a beneficial future might look like. And so it's a completely honest conversation if it's working well. And all that's happening in the conversation is that the two people involved are trying to make things better. That's the goal. Let's see if we can have a conversation that will make things better. I think one of the factors in the resistance to these ideas of discipline and of taking responsibility for yourself is people recognizing that they're not doing that in their own lives and they get upset and instead of looking internally, they try to attack the thing that's upsetting them. They, they attack your message. They attack the philosophy behind it rather than look internally and objectively and having some sort of introspective point of view where you go, okay, am I uh, reacting to this because this is resonates? Like I'm, I'm missing this aspect of my life. Does this diminish me? Or is this guy pointing something out that I can benefit from? Very few people are willing to do that. Very few people are willing to take that critical moment to look at their own behavior and look at their own thought process and wonder if mm. the actual adverse reaction they have to this person's message is because they know that they're wrong. Start the process of becoming much more honest with yourself. It will help you make much better decisions and it will help you in the long run. It may not taste as fun or as glamorous in the short term, but it will put you in a much better position. Stop doing the things that you know are wrong that you could stop doing, right? So it's, it's, a, fairly, it's a fairly limited attempt. First of all, we're not gonna say that you know what the good is or what the truth is in any ultimate sense. But we will presume that there are things that you're doing that for one reason or another you know are not in your best interests. There's something about them that you just know you should stop. They're kind of self-evident to you. Other things you're gonna be doubtful about. You're not gonna know which way is up and which way is down. But there are things that you're doing that you know you shouldn't do. Now some of those you won't stop doing for whatever reason. You don't have the discipline or maybe there's a secondary payoff or you don't believe it's necessary or it's too much of a sacrifice or you're angry or resentful or, or afraid, who knows. But there's another subset that you could stop doing. It might be a little thing. Well, that's fine, stop doing it and see what happens. And what'll happen is your vision will clear a little bit and then something else will pop up that you will also know you should stop doing and that you could stop doing. And you could do that repeatedly for, for an indefinite period of time. And, and, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to ever be able to formulate a clear and final picture of what constitutes the truth and the good. But it does mean that you'll be able to continually move away from what's untruth and what's bad. And, you know, that's not a bad start. Discipline, it does start with waking up early. It really does. 
that is just the beginning. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. But you have to absolutely apply it to things outside of just waking up early. It's, it's everything. It's working out every day, making yourself stronger and faster and more flexible and healthier. It's about disciplining your emotions so you can make good decisions. It's about doing the tasks that you don't necessarily want to do, but that you know will help you. And that's what discipline is. Discipline means taking the hard road, the uphill road, to do what's right. He was a man now who was you know, preparing for the biggest bodybuilding show of his life and he, he didn't have any income coming in. You know, I, I don't know, at least in my mind, uh, a, a, a better underdog story than this man. I mean, here he is as a man who grew up with no parents, went from foster home to foster home, you know, had to fend for himself in a, in a very you know, difficult world, had no parental guidance, had no parental leadership. Uh, really had no one advising him on, on how to be a man or, or a person in, in society, in regular society. And here he was now, one of the top bodybuilders in the world. And he's still struggling with these, these same uh, demons, so to speak. While other bodybuilders you know, out there, all the competitors uh, seem to be living in the lap of luxury uh, with high paying contracts, high paying magazine contracts. and. What struck me as, as being even more unusual is that, that, that Kai wasn't sad over it, that he wasn't bitching about it, that he wasn't complaining about it. And he was kind of happy in a sense to be doing what he loved the most. And uh, glad in a sense to be given the chance to do it, even given the, the sparse condi Spartan conditions that he found himself in. Successful people, I imagine, have to worry less about what the size of the obstacles are, the finances or the lack thereof, and all the other things that we can say represent the, the size and weight of the opposition. And what the successful person is going to aim to do, and what all of us that would like to be successful would probably want to adopt as a part of our philosophy would be to worry less about the obstacles and fix our thoughts on the goal. Did you feel you were going to win this show coming here tonight? Yes, yes. I, I, and I still believe that the possibilities exist. I believe in, in um, infinite possibilities. And, uh, you know, circumstances and situations don't say who the man is. It's what the man does in the face of these things that will, you know, identify who he is. Mind is everything. If you don't believe you can do something, then you can't. If you believe that your father was a bum and he left you, or your mother wasn't any good, if you believe that your upbringing was substandard, and therefore you have to walk around as a refugee from that crisis situation for the rest of your life, forever bearing the burden of that experience, then that will be your life. It's like you have to save your own life. Nobody's going to be able to save it for you. So we have to do what we have to do, no matter what it is. In the journey of getting in shape, it's a long, long run, right? The person who's standing at the end with their hand raised isn't the person with all the genetics. It isn't the person with the most potential. It's the person that has the greatest perseverance. It's always willing to get out. The difference between a champion and a, and a loser is that the, you know, they both fail. It's that the loser allows the failure to stand for life. With a champion, even though he gets knocked on his ass, finds the fortitude to stand back up, reface that endeavor until it becomes his favor, until he wins. That's the difference. Champions get back up and do it again. And the difference between someone that's successful here or someone that's a spectator here is that a person that's successful, you know, they believe in themselves so much and their belief overrides any crowd's disbelief. 
What does that mean to you, this victory? It means everything. It means everything. It means you were right. It means that the people that didn't believe, they were wrong. It means that when you don't believe, you do yourself a disservice because it is wrong. So you got to believe. You got to believe in what you want to do. You got to believe in what you want to get accomplished and believe that somehow, somewhere within yourself and in the universe around you, there are tools and resources that will be of aid and help the man that really wants to get it done. Be clear in your mind in what you intend to achieve. Know what you are going to do. That doesn't seem like too much to ask. Certainly in war. And you wouldn't think it would be too much for people to ask in their lives either. But how often do we see people going through their lives without knowing what they are trying to do, without having any intent, without having a clear mission? I'm talking on an individual level. As a person, people go through their lives without knowing what it is they want to do, what they want to accomplish. So know what your mission is. Know what your intent. As the commander of your life, know what your intent is. And then fight with everything you've got to win. Don't let nobody turn you around. That's real. Because that's why most people don't act on their dreams and ideas. That's why most people, when I'm talking with kids that are in institutions, and I said, what happened? Why, why did you give up working hard and making good grades? Well, they started teasing me. And they allowed that peer pressure to cause them to scale down their dreams and their ambitions. They started following the crowd. That's why many people don't do the things they want to do, because he doesn't have the guts or the boldness to stand up in life and say, I'm going to live my dream. I'm going to commit myself to live out what's in me. I heard Dr. Johnny Youngblood say, I must live what's in me. I said, why do you do this? He said, I got to do it. I got to do it. And I'm saying, find something in your life that you say, hey, it might not work out, but I got to do this. Why? Hey, it's the one thing I love. It's my peace. It's my thing. You don't need anybody to approve you. You don't need anybody to say, go ahead on and do it. If you get that, that's fantastic. If you get that encouragement, that's great. But I say stand up within yourself boldly and say, this is my life. I'm controlling my destiny. <laughs>